This is Today's Business Leaders, actionable advice from real-world professionals. And now, here's your host, Gabe Arnold. All right, so on the show today, I have Scott Lucas uh, with Scott Lucas Strategies, and we are going to talk about what we always talk about because it's my favorite topic in my entire life, probably, um, next in music, maybe, uh, <laughs> entrepreneurship. So welcome to the show, Scott. Thank you. I appreciate you uh, bringing me on, man. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So um, to get started, could, you know, tell, tell me when you first realized you're an entrepreneur. I first realized it. Probably early on when I was a teenager, you know, uh, I used to uh, mow grass and I got money from there. I got some allowance when I was younger, but my mom was a single mom and, you know, I saw the struggle for some of you who've been raised by single mothers, you understand the struggle they go to, to be the mom and the dad and friends. So it was around that time to where I was like, you know, let me see if I could help myself to where mom doesn't have to give me allowance or whatever. So I probably was about maybe 11, 10, 11 ish. Mm -hmm. And I started doing that. So that was the first instance of me knowing, Hey, I have that uh, leadership ability to be able to uh, do things on my own, be self-sufficient. So it was like, and then it kind of progressed later on, later on in life. You know, I went, I went to uh, technical school. I didn't go the college route, uh, but I have a technical degree, associates in computer networking. And then it was right after I graduated from Rett's Institute, 2002. Couldn't find a job. Uh, you know, I was three certs away from being an MCSC, went out there, tried to find a job, doing this and that. I tried to offer services for free. But for a lot of you, probably been in the market before right, right out of college, you know, it's like, well, we need someone with experience. Well, I don't have it. So I come to you. So I did that heavy for about six months, two years. Like, you know what? And then I just, from there I did sales. I, I've been, I have, I, being in IT, I got almost seven years of IT experience, but I have about 10 years in sales experience. So it was like different things from door to door marketing, business to business. And then I've been back and forth a little bit, but it wasn't until, October of 2016 where I was like, you know what, let's do something more serious than just a spare time, part-time hobby thing. So yeah, that's where we are now. That's where I'm now. So. Very cool. Um, you said something interesting that kind of stuck out to me. You said that you realized early on, like when I asked you about entrepreneurship, that you had the drive or the ability or the interest to step up and be a leader. Mm -hmm. And that really struck me because I, I guess, at least not recently, I've never thought about how that's actually what I admire in entrepreneur, you know, the entrepreneurs that I follow mm -hmm. is leadership. And sometimes I think in today's internet entre entrepreneur world um, with, you know, all the noisy loud mouths out there that talk about things that probably don't matter. Um, it's, it's easy to get distracted and think, you know, entrepreneurship is about making money, which it is, but it's actually about leadership and, and if maybe, maybe if we started reframing the conversation into, you know, are you a good leader that might change the entrepreneurial conversation. So I don't know, that exactly. just kind of stood out to me. <laughs> um, and it obviously comes with like, you know, leading yourself first. Like, you know, I saw in some of the stuff you sent over, I mean, you're like, I've been in dozen of, dozens of MLMs um, here, um, which is awesome because your first MLM was mine too. And I'm still oh. I'm still a part of Legal Shield. They're phenomenal, awesome. um, <laughs> which is lucky, right? Because there's a lot of bad ones out there. <laughs> yes, more bad than good, unfortunately. But you know, that's probably another topic if you want to really talk about deep network marketing stuff. So, yeah, but, yeah, um, but yeah, but I mean, there's definitely like phenomenally good network marketing, and they're one of them. So it's really cool that you kind of landed and started there. And you also talk about you know being able to go door to door and sell, and and you're also pretty unique. Um, and I can relate to this cause I've done it and technical stuff my entire life and yeah. soul. And that's not like the normal person job description, I would say like right. oh, yeah. <laughs> super nerdy and technical and be able to talk to people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Sometimes, sometimes I don't like the people, but you know, it's, I can, you know, it's not about not wanting to, it's just, you know, eh, one of those days, quote unquote. Right. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, I, I always tell people I'm a closeted intro, introvert and nobody believes me, but I'm super, super introverted naturally. Yeah. But yeah. I I it was really hard to make money as an introvert. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's not impossible, but it's hard. <laughs> yeah, it is definitely. So, um, so that's pretty interesting. And, and, uh, and you know, unfortunately, um, yeah, out of college, it sounds like pretty closely after the dot com bust. And so, of course, there's, there's probably even a tougher job market, uh, you know, for that time anyway, too. Right. When I got out, I graduated 2002. When I got out and got my, uh, my first wife at the time, she got me a laptop. Mm -hmm. And around that time, the first, not only was it prepaid legal, the first MLM, but the first business opportunity was Don LaPree's, uh, how to, how to make tiny little classified ads. Nice. And then from there, Carlton sheets, I bought Carlton sheets. I tried looking at real estate. It was like, I just, I wish people would be more honest as an entrepreneur, tell them straight up, you know, it's all, it's, it's really easy to sell the sexiness and the hype. Right. But when you sell that, somebody gets up. Oh, I didn't know. You kind of lie to them. Yeah. I just, me, I'm pretty honest, very brutally. Sometimes my wife is like, you know, people think I'm an asshole, but I'm really not. You just don't know me yet. <laughs> so. I've had that said about me too, because I, <laughs> and I've gotten better about how I communicate, I think, but I'd rather just tell you straight and have you go away. Like I literally just had to send a note um, to somebody uh, a few minutes ago. And I said, I was honest with you on the first call. And now you're asking me this question it means that, that you weren't honest with me. I said, this takes 90 days. I said, if you're not, not interested, then that's fine. But you told me you were committed to 90 days to work on this with us. And, you know, and then I'm getting whining and crying and like, mm -hmm. I can be pretty direct um, as yeah, well. You got to nowadays. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's with, with, with being online, whether you're an entrepreneur or not, mm -hmm. sometimes the, our videos like this is better. But when you're actually writing something out, the context can always be misconstrued and, misunderstood yeah. so yeah that's, that's what, what technology I, does <laughs> yeah i know it, yeah it definitely it can definitely mis be misconstrued like i it, it, ha it happens and it, you know it happened to me yesterday i wrote, sent something over to longtime customer and and he and he was he's a great communicator and he was kind enough to say is like i don't think this is what you meant but i felt like you were saying this and I, and I wrote back and i was like thank you for asking absolutely not that's not what i meant um, so that you know, you're totally right. You have to really have context and kind of know the person personally like this, like face to face right. and to fully understand how their, you know, what their written content looks like in my opinion. And right. what's nice, uh, you know, in the age of technology and the age of video is like, um, for this other issue I had just had to deal with, I sent them a, a loom video. I just popped on and said, Hey, just to be clear, you know, I don't want there to be a misunderstanding. Um, you know, here's the deal. And I just sent him a video note back and I highly, highly encourage people to get on video whenever possible. I mean, it's like, it's super easy. It's free 98% of the time. And it's so much easier to be like, Oh, like I, I kind of get what you're about. And one thing that I'm hyper aware of and, and through my life and experience and who I am and plus just some study is, um, you know, the majority of the communication is happening you know, through facial expression and body, you know, body language, mm -hmm. it, it's like 50 some percent and then like 30% is tone. And then like the last, per, I forget the percentages, but the last bit is the words you say. So basically the words that you say don't matter compared yeah, exactly. to how you say them tonally and what your face is doing and how you're like talking with your hands or not, you know, or whatever. Right, exactly. Uh, your, be your behavior speaks louder than your words. Exactly. And I wish that you would think with such a visual tool like we have, you know, as the internet, it's not all text-based like it was when you and I were playing around on it in the early days. It's like, it's super visual. It's unfortunate that, like you said, a lot of people just make things up that aren't true. Um, yeah. And I'd rather start out by saying, hey, here's the worst case scenario, or here's w what it really is. Like, we have a bunch of closers coming onto our team um, over the next week or two. And I said, if awesome. you guys don't, if you guys don't have 90 days to put into this, then it's not going to work for you. I just want to be upfront. Like if you have to make money tomorrow, this is not the gig for you. Right. I can send you all the deals and you can make a bunch of money here, but you have to be able to stick it out for 90 days. Yeah. Um, and I'd rather start conversations like that with people than say, Oh yeah. Like, you know, tomorrow you're, you're going to make $50,000 and there's way too much of that shit going on. <laughs> oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> it makes me really angry. <laughs> yeah. I think with the whole Facebook 
being more uh, following their terms lately. Mm -hmm. I think some people are waking up. Some yeah. people are that light bulb's going on. Oh, hey, this shit ain't working the way it should have because Facebook, it's not Facebook's fault. It's our own fault. And we, we as entrepreneurs, yeah. we have to accept a certain level of accountability for our own success and our failures and stop playing a victim and blaming Facebook or social media or anything of that nature. As yeah. entrepreneurs, the more you control something, the more you can control the result. Yep. You can't control the results a lot with social media because, as you can tell, algorithms change. Some yep. platforms go out of business. Some uh, get sold out, whatever. So you've got to own an asset. We don't own Facebook. We don't own all that other stuff. We own us. Yeah, exactly. And, and when you take ownership for where things are at in your life and in business and everything, then you have a chance of success. Yeah. If you blame it on the failure of other people, technology, other things, then um, it's not going to work out. And, you know, it's, it's amazing to me that people still who claim to be in business make statements like, oh, it was somebody else's fault or, oh, this change. It's like, if you're not smart enough to know that this stuff is going to change, then right. go get a job and work for yeah. somebody else and relearn what you need to learn to actually yeah. be a business owner. You know what this is? The world's <laughs> smallest fiddle. Cry me a tear, dude. <laughs> you know? You want to play the victim mentality? Just like you said, go get a job. Yep. You know, it's, it's not all bed of roses. Sometimes you get depressed. Sometimes you get upset. Sometimes you get sad. Sometimes... You stay up until three, four, five o'clock in the morning. Yep. Or and then you get up at six or seven and repeat the process. I know. I tell people I did that for my entire twenties. My entire twenties. And I sometimes I don't think people believe me, but I'm like, no, I really worked till like three or four in the morning. And then I by the time I got home, went to bed at like four, four thirty, I was back at work at nine. Yeah. No, like I, I don't think it's healthy. No, of course not. But it's not, but but there are times where you have to do what it takes and Mm -hmm. that's the unglamorous part of, of it. But you also have to have like mission and direction. And um, I talked about this the other day. It's like, you have to do what it takes, whatever it takes to be successful. Sometimes that's putting in long hours. The farther I get into this game, I realize that often it's actually about doing the really difficult thing. Working long hours only is difficult in the beginning when you're establishing a work ethic and a habit. Mm -hmm. What's really hard is confronting the person on your team that's screwing everything up and needs to either adapt or leave. Um, what's really hard is firing customers because if you haven't done that before, that's scary the first time. What's really hard is like owning up to the fact that you just crashed at something that you screwed up and like, you know, that's hard. Yes. <laughs> you know, I, I think it's, uh, I saw something a while ago, like an IT report because sometimes a week I read white papers, but I think 70 to 80% of all IT failures or issues are because of the IT department. <laughs> and unfortunately, it's technology. Unfortunately, you know, you try to update a server and with the firmware and you backed up everything, you did your contingencies and all that, but then poosh, yep. you get calls from the CEO, president, and then your boss, hey, what's going on? How long? It's like, I just found out about it. Calm down. Let me get to what I'm doing and then I can give you a better ETA. Yeah. Exactly. You know how that is being into IT before. So, yep. We right now are having a little bit of downtime because I made us, well, I, I'll take ownership for it. There was a misstep, misstep that happened that I probably should have educated everybody on a little bit and we're having a little bit of downtime. And it's like those things happen. And the easiest way to solve them is to take ownership and say, yep. We made a mistake and we're going to fix it. The worst thing you can do and the best way to lose the customers is say, oh, I don't know what's going on or, <laughs> or, you know, it was Scott's fault. It wasn't my fault. Scott told me to do that. Um, and then like, that's just such a, just a wussy thing to do. Um, that, that's what you do at a job, not in a business. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> I totally agree. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, it's just, you know, entrepreneurship is not easy, but it's the most rewarding thing I think you could ever work on. If you're it's rewarding if you do it smart. Yes. They always say work hard, hard work pays off. I went to a Catholic school when I was uh, elementary and mm -hmm. the sister, she was like, hard work 
that we, we'd have mass every Friday. She'd say, hard work, and then everybody in the chapel would say, pays off. And I'm looking and say, yes and no, but it's more, you have to be smart. You, somebody can work hard and be doing all the wrong things. Yep. <laughs> but if you work smart, you can still work hard and, and get the things, get better results. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, it reminds me of this quote I always like. It's a Mark Twain quote. It says, life is hard, but it's even harder when you're stupid. <laughs> 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 I don't think I've ever heard that, but I like that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's from him, um, or I'm misquoting somebody else, but that's the quote. But um, it always makes me laugh. It's like, yeah, it's like, and and to me, I I I do tons of stupid things, and I you know on a weekly basis. But he doesn't, <laughs> but, or and mistakes. Like, but what I consider stupidity to do is not learning from it. And it's like, I did something yesterday. I sold something that. Um, we do a ton of, but I, I put the wrong account manager on it. And I'm like, I just kind of did this and uh, I'm not sure if it's a good fit or not. And they're like, no, it is not a good fit. <laughs> and they're like, I'll take care of it this time, but don't do it again. I'm like, all right, sorry. <laughs> and it wasn't, you know, I won't do it again. And so it's, yeah. it was good to do, but I didn't really know, honestly, like I just made a mistake, but if I did it again, that's stupid. Like then you're an idiot. It's like, yeah, exactly. Um, you know, so yeah, it's definitely, you, you've got to be able to reflect on what you did good and bad and say, okay, you know, what mistakes I made, what I want to avoid. And then the harder thing, in my opinion, in, in self-reflection and kind of looking back is that it's harder to look back and clearly identify just the, the key, key pieces that you did right that you should repeat. I don't always see enough focus on, you know, people going, okay, you know, if I look at the last month or the last quarter, or last year, or whatever period you're reflecting on, what did we do right and what should we do more of? Um, that's, you know, that's the ideal. Cause if you can accelerate that stuff, then you'll go a little faster over the speed bump mistakes that you make, you know? Right. Exactly. It's a, life is about living and learning, man. Just improve, get better. Yeah. You, you know, an idle mind, I forget the quote, but an idle mind does not help. You have to be productive. Keep moving forward your goal toward yeah. your goal. Cause if you don't, you're going to live with regrets. It's called wistful yeah. regret. You know, it's do yeah. everything that you can when you can. Yeah. And like a big lesson I've been learning a lot about this year too, is like, forgive yourself for the dumb choices you made last month, last year, last decade. And like, you didn't know any better. Like, you know, you did what you could with what you had. Um, and you know, that's like one of my favorite Teddy Roosevelt quotes. Cause I guess we're on a quote kick today. Um, you know, you he's, always, he's always like, do what you have with, you know, do what you can with what you have where you are. Mm -hmm. Like, and, and that's, good for in the moment but it's also good to look back at the job you blew or the relationship you screwed up or the thing that didn't go right and say I don't need to hate myself for that anymore I can accept and love the fact that I I felt like in my heart I did the best that I could or if you were in a bad place own it and then forgive yourself for not having your heart where it should, you know should be yeah I need to I struggle with that before Cause you know, I've always been very critical of myself more than any other person. And it's like, for some people it's entrepreneurs, it's all up in there in your head and mm -hmm. forgiving yourself. You have to know, Hey, all you can do is all you can do. And that, and we've talked about quotes. That's a quote, I think by AL Williams, mm -hmm. you know, he had a book called pushing up people and said, all you can do is all you can do. So it's a lot of it's in your head about just uh, forgiving yourself. It's like, as you said, man, you've got to move on. <laughs> Life's too short. Yeah. So. And, and sometimes, or I would probably say most of the time we're the hardest on ourselves. And that's, and I think that comes from like false expectations of others and false expectations of ourselves, but it also probably comes from real expectations too, of mm -hmm. people that put expectations on us that they shouldn't. Um, and so it's, that's, that's harder than I thought. Like I, um, to learn how to forgive yourself, to learn how to move on and like not hold on to that stuff. Cause you're having the dual conversation all the time in your head of like, here's who I think I am. And I'm also talking to who I am. You know, you're having two conversations all the time. And True. a good friend of mine, um, Ash told me something the other day. She's like, she's like, if you can love your partner, you know, your wife, husband, girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever, if you can love and accept them unconditionally, she said, then you have the skills to love and accept yourself unconditionally. And you need to forgive yourself too. And you need to be okay with where you're at and just totally accept the state that you're in, you know, future, right. past, you know, past, present, future. 
Um, and that really hit home for me because I was like, oh, yeah, I know how to, you know, I know how, how to have a good relationship. It only took me th three tries, but I have a really good one now. And, All right. <laughs> uh, uh, and so it's like, you know, I know how to do that. So I just need to talk to myself that way. And then, um, you know, that, that just really hit home for me. It's like, it was, there's a lot of times we're really hard on ourselves, or, or we allow other people that were critical of us to create like the echo chamber and our how in our heads of us being, you know, hard on ourselves. Yeah. It can yeah. be a struggle and hard at times, but you know, just got to move on. Re yeah. Reframe your mind, just kind of reprogram your mind for success pretty much. Yeah, absolutely. So, so yeah, entrepreneurship is a never ending, ending game. That's for sure. Um, um, it's always evolving. Or it's, it, entrepreneurship is just like technology. Yeah. It's always evolving and something better and bigger is going to come out. So you got, always got to stay on your toes, stay on your heels and just move forward and just keep doing what you're doing. Yep. Definitely. Yeah. So what, tell me a little bit about what you're up to, what you offer and what you do for people and who you like serving. So what I'm up to is pretty much, I'm an online business manager by title, but if you were, to, if I were to kind of explain it, in layman's terms, I help business owners with the tech stuff to where they can focus on what they're good at. You know, a lot of people become an entrepreneur and say, I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to do this. And you got to have a website or this and that or something tech, technology, technologically based. Yeah. And a lot of times people are really good at figuring it out on, them, on their own and all that stuff. And then they go on groups or whatever to ask questions. But what I do is I take out all that stuff. And I pretty much manage, I've got a client right now who I'm helping manage their funnels, uh, some of their support tickets, a lot of other things so, so that he can focus on what he's good at and what he's good at is speaking. So I just take care of everything else from like the website and stuff. And as far as uh, who I help ideal client wise, it's just people who are honest. I mean, me by the core, I'm a very transparent person. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm very honest. I'm too honest to a point to where it can come across like we talked about earlier as being brutal or blunt or being an asshole, but it's not. It's just from a, from a consulting point of view, you're fucking up because of this and that I can come in and do this and that yeah. type of thing. So my client is someone who has integrity, who's honest, who is struggling with the tech stuff because they would rather focus on, calling people if that's what they're good at. Or, you know, if you're, you, you're, you're probably good at cold email, you should mm -hmm. focus on that and then outsource quote unquote, uh, your other tech stuff. Right. And as far as my offering, uh, right now I'm a service provider, so I don't have like a course or a product. It's a service mm -hmm. to the point to where, Hey, you know, if you're looking for somebody to help you, not just with website stuff, you know, a lot of people out here, Oh, I build funnels. I do this. I do that. Funnels are great. But at the end of the day, let's face it. If the technology behind your funnel is messed up, your website's not, you know, it's not going to be great. And, you know, you can call somebody who uh, manufactures or sells that software, call or support or chat with them and all this stuff. And it's like, I work support. See, I don't just have my business. I also have a job. Mm -hmm. right? And I work, I actually work at tech support for my job. Nice. Okay. So what I do job wise how it equates to uh, what I do in my business is the employer I work with is an authoritative DNS provider. Now in layman's non geek term, that's kind of like uh, where we're at right now. I use Comcast for my internet service provider. Mm -hmm. They're like what they would call their recursive. They have to contact this other entity, whether it's an authoritative DNS server, like the company I work with or dyne or cloudflare, which mm -hmm. are competitors in the field, quote unquote, and they answer for, Hey, I want to go to dub, 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 Google mm -hmm. Comcast or your ISP has to talk to whoever their entity is that, Hey, do you have this, uh, do you have this available right now? Or do I need to wait for 300 seconds or whatever it may be to answer it? So as well, that equates is, I think that gives me an edge because I understand DNS and a lot of people talk about custom domains for certain funnels or Wix or online sales pro or whatever it is. When people are setting up a domain, it's that tech stuff like, Oh my God, like, or GoDaddy or Namecheap, the hosting yeah. stuff. I mean, it, 
a lot of people say, well, I'm an agency. And it's like, I wouldn't say I'm an agency. I mean, I have another person that helps me every now and again, mm -hmm. but we're actually trying to start an IT company. Yeah. We're not just an agency. We're trying to start an IT company to where we offer these different services. And because with agency work, I mean, you have an agency, right? Yep. So you have an agency of different people versus a company, which is nothing wrong with it. It's just a company that has multiple products, multiple things in that. It's the same entity in, in a way. So yep. that's pretty much around about what I do. I know I kind of did some techno babble there. So if anybody has any questions about that, feel free, feel free to ask and I can, uh, and see, that's one thing that I've had to struggle with and kind of work on mm -hmm. is I'm sure you know who Russell Brunson is, right? Yep. You know, he talks about techno babble. You know, a lot of people, you're saying techno babble, but people are like, Huh? Staring at deer, like a deer in the headlights. So it's like I've struggled with trying to say, okay, let's bring this down to layman's terms so it's not non-geek. Yep. So that's one thing I have to I struggle with every now and again. So it's like, okay, let me rephrase. <laughs> I've been working on that too because I'm doing an internal team training series about like DNS and proxies and yeah, optimizing your computer and all that kind of stuff. Um, Cause it's, I get, it. I'm the resident CTO as well. Um, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'll be moving out of that here pretty soon, which is nice, but, but yeah, cool. it's in whatever our specialty is, it doesn't matter if it's technical or copywriting or design or coaching. Like we all have to bring all of that back to one simple point. And this is why Russell makes hundreds of millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. It's because he can tell a story that explains the principles better than anybody else. Yeah. And so it's all, it's all story based. If you want to move people, then you should start with the original communication platform mm -hmm. stories. Right. And if you get that right, if you get the principles, the bedrock foundation, right. Of how to communicate, everything else is easy. Exactly. <laughs> my, my, I just need to work on my storytelling a little better. <laughs> yeah. It's something that I've intentionally worked on a lot over the last couple of years. And it makes a huge difference because if you can understand the concept, then you can dive into the specifics and you can tell them about a records and C names and all that. Right. Know, IPv6. That nobody cares about it. <laughs> exactly. A lot of people don't want to be sold on the tech stuff. And I get that from a marketing perspective and selling products and services. Mm -hmm. But on the flip side from IT people like us, you need that tech. You need to understand it or have somebody right. in your back pocket, have an IT guy in your back pocket who can understand it that you can say, Hey, blah, 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 with st instead of having to wait an hour or, or 24 hours for the tech support people that you send a ticket in to respond to you. Yeah. It happens because I work support. I, you know, I understand that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm the IT guy in your back pocket. Yeah. No, that's yeah. awesome. And that's having like that outsource, you know, IT department or the CTO role, um, you know, or whatever, however you kind of, you know, if you want to phrase it as huge because learning a brand new skill, like how to set up DNS and all that is not, that's not going to make you money, but if learning that is not going to make you money, but the problem is, is not having it done right. is going to cost you way, way, way too much money. Oh yeah. Um, and so it's, you know, it's definitely something you just have to really, you have to manage correctly. And I think it comes back to kind of what we touched on early on is that, to really be successful as an entrepreneur, you have to be an even more successful leader and leadership in this type of scenario that we're talking about is knowing enough about the concepts and principles of something so that you can support and guide the person that actually needs to do the work. So as a CEO, you don't need to understand IP version six for sure, let alone how IP addresses work technically, but you do need to invest time to have conceptual and kind of principle based understanding for two reasons. One, so that you're not getting hosed by people that don't know what they're doing. So you need to have basic understanding. You don't have to know how to do it, but you need to understand kind of core principles and process, you know, aspects there. And then two, you have to spend time investing in the people on your team that are going to handle that for you. So you learn about them and you build the relationship. And if they're good at what they do, they're passionate about that nerdy thing that you don't do. Right. Nerdy in any area, not just tech, you know, whatever they're nerd out on. And if you really care and you build the relationship, then they're going to protect you and you can protect them. And it's, a, it's, you know, it's the right relationship, but too often people go, Oh, I don't know about that. Or I don't understand or, or it confuses me and they leave it at that. And they not only cut off their ability to have any basic understanding, but then they cut off the relationship. 
because yeah. it's a topic or thing that scares them or that they're not good at. Exactly. And then, then they wait and wait too long. I, I had a lady I helped earlier. I haven't talked to her in, in like a couple months because it was like a one-off thing. Talked to her this morning. She was bawling. And I was like, what's going on? Is like, uh, you know, my, my website is – the WordPress is blank. It's some other stuff. And it's like, how long has it been it been like this? How come you didn't tell me? And it's like, oh, I was trying to figure out on my own because I didn't want to bother you. <laughs> and, I get, and I respect that I yep. respect it more than anything. I like people who want to at least understand or try, try to do it on their, themselves. Because from a product support person or IT person, you know, I'm always on the phone or chatting with people on how to do something that didn't even look at the knowledge base, didn't right. even try to search anything. Oh, you're the first person I called is like, oh, that's fine. That's why I'm right. here. But it's like, it's okay to a certain point to uh, not want to know what it is that you need to know technical wise. Right. But to wait two weeks to almost a month for a website to not be working and stress out about it, it's, it's unnecessary. So I was like, you know, let's take a, take a deep breath. Calm down. I'll take yep. a look at it. Let me give, give me some time because I got to do this and that or whatever. And it's like, you know, it's, and it, to me, honestly, sometimes I'm like with Google and everything else that we have on them, like <laughs> Google it. And, and you know, sometimes it doesn't, I don't mean to come across as, as a condescending way when I say, or when most people, most, I don't know what other people are thinking, but when I say, Hey, did you happen to Google it or do your research? It's not because I'm trying to be a smart ass. It's because what have you done for, it's me troubleshooting. Right. What have you done so far? What haven't you done? It's me asking probing, qualifying questions to figure out how I can help you to get this resolved now. Right. Not a week later, not a month later. So it's. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I, we have, we have, a, we have the five minute rule on our team. You can be stuck for five minutes and then you need to ask your manager or me or somebody else, another team member, because um, you know, you don't, you can't, I don't, I don't pay people to be stuck and we yeah. have a huge team and tons of resources. And I do want, I, I totally agree with what you're saying, cause I do want you to try to fix things or look into it or take some initiative because yeah. then you can say, I, you know, I've been, I'm stuck on this. I don't know what to do. I already tried X, Y, and Z and that's more efficient and you can grow and learn that way. But I also don't want people being stuck forever. Like you mentioned that person that called you, it's like, you know, really it's like, that, neither is that productive. And so it's a balance of both things. You don't want to just, you know, give away all responsibility for it, but you have to at the same time kind of learn where your limits are and just grow those over time. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you've got to, you've got to know, just like the old song, Kenny Rogers, you got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them. You know, yep. you got to know when to call somebody and know when to just Google it or do it, whatever is convenient for you at that time. Yeah, exactly. And the more you, the more you work on knowing yourself and understanding who you actually are, what your strengths are, what you're good at, then you can, you can dive deeper into things that you could learn and grow in and you can stay away from things that, you know, will never make you happy or satisfied or, or, or that you'll just get frustrated with. Um, exactly. so like, it, cause like for me, like I don't mind hyper technical stuff and digging into it. I enjoy that, but I want to, I get really, really upset if I have to deal with trying to balance a checkbook like to the penny. I, I've never done that in my life and I never will. Right? <laughs> because there's other people that like doing that and I don't, I could give two shits about where those three pennies are. <laughs> <laughs> you know? They're in my pocket. Give <laughs> <laughs> it like, off the top. No. <laughs> not, I round up everything and it's like, you know, yep. um, I have people that love doing that stuff and so. So it's a, it's a balance. And the more we know ourselves, you know, obviously the better off we can be. So definitely. But yeah. Awesome. And it, you know, I, I definitely recommend everybody, you know, figure out what you like doing and then don't bang your head against the wall with things that you're just not fast at, you know, bring in somebody like Scott, you know, if, if it's technical stuff, bring in somebody, if you're not good at writing, bring in people, if you're not good at implementing processes, you know, whatever the, whatever the, the thing is that you're not so good at, like, you're going to make more and be happier and grow the right way and probably faster if you bring in team members, you know, to do those things. Trying to do it all yourself is only acceptable for an extremely short amount of time, in my opinion. Um, right. You know, and so it's, it's just foolishness not to build out a team of people that can help you. Yeah. And people have a huge misconception that 
oh, you know, to bring in somebody, it's going to cost me tens of thousands or something astronomical. That's never the case. You can always work out a win-win. There's always a win-win on the table with somebody. It may not be with the first person you talk to, but there's always a way to make it a fit where everybody makes a little more, is happier, and, you know, it doesn't have to break the bank in the beginning. Yeah, because I'm glad you brought that up because I know there's been times where I have bartered. I've bartered to where I was, uh, I'm a moderator of a group and the guy in the group, I won't mention his name, but if, if I mention his name, you, you'll know him. And he was like, Hey, can you help me transfer videos from my membership from this site to another? And if you do that, I'll give you access to the site. Yeah. He was selling it for like $997. Yeah. Like it, online. I think it was between five to a thousand, 500 to a thousand. like, sure, I'll help you. Yeah. It took me a, <laughs> It took a while, you know, when you're migrating a lot of video content and, you know, when you're doing it on a Wi-Fi speed, it slows it down. So it's like, it took a while, but I'm not, I'm not afraid of doing bartering if it's something that I'm looking for. Right. You know, that's, you know, just like what you said. So, and vice versa, you Mm -hmm. know, it doesn't have to break the bank. Even if somebody doesn't want to barter with you, it could be something worked out to where I've not done this, but I've heard people to where, Hey, I will do pro bono for X amount of hours. And then the other X amount of hours, uh, we can work something out as far as paying it. Or like if they're selling a product or something. Yeah. I had one lady who was like, Hey, I can't pay you a lot, but I can, uh, you know, she makes like bath bombs. It was like, I don't really take baths, <laughs> take showers, but my wife and my son do more than I do. It's like, yeah. okay. And and they like bath bombs. So it's like, yeah. okay, I could do that. So it, it it's just I'm like not. trying to find, you know, that mutual, that mutualness to mm-hmm. see if it's something worthwhile. And if it's not, eh, you just need to pay me or something versus not bartering. So, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up too. Cause it, it's more than the money in any relationship. It's important that you find people that you can truly exchange value with. Mm-hmm. Um, Bingo. Way more than the money. So, Bingo. And, it, and I'll, I'm going to share a story because because I've done I've done both wrong for many years and finally have figured this out over the last few years of like who I should be working with money aside um, when you're working with the wrong people there's no amount of money they can pay you that will make you happy and it will be fucking hell the entire time exactly and that and that also applies when you you know barter or trade or partner with people that you shouldn't work with you're going to hate yourself for making that decision and it's going to blow up on you when it comes to bartering time or money or whatever you're exchanging as part of the deal, if you're working with the right people, it doesn't feel like work. Mm-hmm. Um, exactly. And, and then it can lead to, you know, really, really valuable relationships. What are you going to say? No, I was, I'm agreeing with you, man. It's you're, you're on point. I mean, it's, it's all about just, uh, it's about trying to find that good fit, whether it's yeah. bartering or paying for somebody. And th- there's been times when you talk about value, mm-hmm. you hit you hit the home because there were times to where when I was first starting out, I did some stuff for free. Yep. And one strategy that I that I used sometimes I still use it depending on how small or whatever is I'll ask people, do you mind giving me a video testimonial? And what yeah. I'm doing. And uh, so I'll do exchange services. I'll help you with this if you agree to get leaving me a, a testimonial. Mm-hmm. I've, yeah, absolutely. that's been successful to a certain point as well yeah and then just like going in groups i mean you're active uh you're active we're both active you're more active in one group than i than i am but uh that's another part of where i do a lot of my uh prospecting prospecting yeah. you know i don't pay for ads a lot right. of it's word of mouth or the value that i share in mm-hmm. groups or people and just engaging and yeah. a lot of people miss the boat i mean you don't have to buy a course on how to monetize your uh, your value on Facebook or in groups when it's just about communicating. Just communicate yeah. and help for free. Then yeah. say, hey, you've been helping me a lot for free. I've gotten this too, you probably have. I, and I see you probably provide a lot of value in the group for free. Can I hire you or can you help me with this and I'll pay you? Sure. Yeah. It ha- <laughs> Just communicate. Exactly, just, oh. be, be, just be good to people. Yeah. Be honest. Be have some fucking integrity. Be honest. Quit lying to people. 
quit cheating people, quit not paying your IT person or uh, doing a chargeback through PayPal because you got all this stuff and then you want to fuck it. Yeah. I'm, I have to bring this up because this is something that I see a lot. A lot of I, I know why a lot of people don't like IT people. And I know why a lot of IT people are hesitant to do work for some other people because they've been burnt in the past by people, not marketers, but just by people in general who go back in their word. You know, yeah. I, I like Marcus Lemonis. Ever since Watch the Prophet? My favorite show. My favorite show too, A Handshake. Where's, yep. Where has the handshake gone? It's all about, I'm going to sign. I can, I can give you an NDA right now. No That's problem. right. <laughs> what happened to the damn handshake? Yeah. I'm just, you know. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And I, that, I love how he operates. And I, when I heard him speak, he said, he's like, the reason I decided to do this show is because I want to show people how to do business right and that being a small business owner is an admirable, admirable career, you know, in this country. And you yeah. don't have to you don't have to be a doctor. You don't have to go to college per se. Like if you do find what everybody's like, I wanted to show people exactly what it means to be an entrepreneur. And he is one of my absolute biggest influences and, you know, the people I just respect the most. Cause it's, you know, it's always like, this is the deal. Like I give you money, we shake hands. It's that's it. And like, and he's very direct and upfront with people. And the, yeah, the people probably do think he's an asshole. He's not an asshole. He's just doing what he said he was going to do. Exactly. He's <laughs> honest. He's, he's got integrity. I'm not yeah. trying to be like the next Marcus Lemonis, obviously, but if there was a leader to follow mm -hmm. out there in the market or mainstream, it would be Marcus. Yeah. Lead Absolutely. with integrity. Be honest to people, even if it pisses them off. Yep. Don't intentionally try to be an asshole. Yeah. And give a handshake. Do what you say you're going to do and keep your commitment. Yeah. And that's, and I think, um, people need to hear that and they need to do it. And then I'm also very aware that I was an asshole and didn't keep my commitments in my early twenties. And so it's a, it's a combination of like owning up to what you did and then growing from it and realizing that you are going to break your word sometimes, but just be honest about it and, and take care of people. And if you screwed something up, give them their money back or make it right. Like, cause you are going to screw things up, but you yeah. don't have to be an asshole on top of fucking something up. Yeah, there's been times to where, I've done some work for somebody and said, Hey, it's not working. Mm -hmm. What well, was working? And I, I don't say it like my school well, was working when I tested it. Well, it's, it's not now. It's like, okay, right. let me go back in. Right. Cause I want to make it right. Even though they've already paid me for what we agreed on. If it's not working, it's not, it's a bad reputation. A bad testimonial will ruin you quicker. If you don't just handle it and say, look, I fucked up. Yep. I'm sorry. L give me, let me fix it. No charge, obviously. Right. Obviously. And then we'll go from there. Yeah. Then they're happy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, or at least they go away quietly, which is okay yeah. too. Like, it's all about being human and having some decency and just, I can't, I can't, we can't speak, speak enough about it. It's just, there's two, it's, it's easy to be indecent. Yes. It's hard to be a decent human being, but when you're decent, you feel better about you. The people yes. who fuck other, well, fuck other people, they're fucking with, they're fucking their own selves. Yeah. Just because your life sucks doesn't mean someone else has to like, somebody else's life has to suck. Yeah, exactly. And it's, yeah, I totally agree. And, and the outcome of aligning yourself with the right people, you know, be that through a paid relationship or a trade or anything can be huge when you do it right. And I, I beginning of the year offered to help somebody who was on the show and I was like, you know what? I think we're on the same page. Like, I think we get it and like you get it. And like, you're somebody that I want to help and be around. And I'm like, let's, I'm like, you know, let's just trade time for a little bit. Um, and we did that and it was great. And that resulted in this, this guy saying, Hey, I want to hire you. Like you're awesome at what you do. And it will end up being a hundred thousand dollar deal over the next 18 months. And it's like, awesome. that can be the outcome of doing things the right way. <laughs> Exactly. Um, and it doesn't, uh, and that was kind of my point. It's like, it doesn't have to start with, it doesn't have to start with money. It can, or, or it doesn't have to, you can trade time. You can trade services. Like you said, you get access to a course because you help somebody out because they can't do that or don't have the time or interest. It's, we need to, to go slower in the beginning of these relationships and see if they are people of integrity, see if we are in alignment 
And then when we're sure, then move forward. And that can be a trial run little paid project. It can be a trial run trade. Um, and and then, then we can really find synergy and really, you know, create real lasting impact and value. And it's all for me, a lot, huge lesson this year, because I've screwed this up a lot is, you know, go slower with who you hire as partners, as clients, as team members, because it's harder to unwind, you know, things than you think. And so that, you know, the higher, slow, fire fast applies there too. There you go. <laughs> I haven't had to fire a customer yet. Of course, I'm just one man shop right now, but I'm sure. <laughs> the ideal is that you wouldn't have to, but um, but right. it's easy for us to be in a position sometimes where we're like, man, I just, you know, this looks good or we just don't take the time to think about it. Or I think everybody in entrepreneurship at some point will, could be in a position where like, I need the work no matter what. And that's a huge temptation that will burn you for a long time if you, oh, if yeah. you do that. <laughs> so um, it does, you don't, you don't have to fire customers if you do it right in the beginning. Um, but it's, but it's easy to make mistakes. And if you do, then, you know, kindly, graciously say, this isn't a fit anymore. Here's your money back, or here's what I'm going to do to make it right as we wrap things up and then, you know, move on. You can do that graciously too. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Awesome. Well, this has been a lot of fun, Scott. Um, Ditto. Yes, I, um, I'm going to go ahead and share your link to your scottlucasstrategies.com. People can check you out there. Is there where, where else can they find you or what's the easiest way to hang out and chat with you and see if, if you guys are a good fit? So people can go to scottlucasstrategies.com. What I have now is just uh, almost like my services. It's just like an opt-in for like a demo of some, some things I have. I'm still updating it, but probably the best way if you want to connect with me, I'm on uh, Facebook. My personal profile is Scott B. Lucas. Or you go to my business page, it's uh, at Scott Lucas Strategies. So I try to keep my, my business simple. I'm just very human. You know, being in IT, I'm always in front of a laptop. I mean, I work from home with my job because I tell, you know, all that stuff. So I try to take a step back from technology a couple yeah. times. So while I'm working on a lot of different things, the automating things, I still like, hey, just connect with me on Facebook. Let's be friends. Let's get to know each other. It's like courting. Yep. Just like what you said. It's slow. Just you want to connect with me? Follow me on Facebook. Uh, I don't have a group yet. I don't know why, but I haven't got to that point yet. But you when know, you're seeing in other groups, you know, we're in the same group. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm in your uh, cold email group. I got your bought your course a while back ago and just trying to implement it here and there. But other than that, I'm on Facebook. And if you want to know more about uh, what I do as part of my portfolio, I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, cool. My LinkedIn name on there is Scott Lucas Strategies there as well. So, Terrific. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for hanging out, Scott. We're definitely on the same page on a lot of things. So that's always fun to have those conversations. And uh, definitely. we'll definitely look forward to having you on again soon. So thank you so much, man. Uh, thanks for having me, Gabe. I appreciate it, man. You have a good day, man. been listening to today's business leaders with Gabe Arnold. Remember to subscribe on iTunes. For more information, visit todaysbusinessleaders.com. Yeah.